Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from weatherist.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's time to talk about this week in weather, and lots to talk about this particular issue, getting this out before the Eagles-Seahawks game on this Sunday evening. It's about uh, 8 p.m. in the east. Uh, topics, we'll talk about the coming cold pattern. You know, it's not going to be severely cold, but it will be sustained cold and possibly getting colder after December 15th, and it looks like it's going to last most of the month. Uh, the Wednesday rain to snow idea, that's kind of falling apart, and we'll go into the reason why that's happening. The Friday and Saturday week coastal low, we still have that concern here for the mid-Atlantic areas and southeast New England. That's going to depend on the position of the low and the low-level temperatures. We'll talk about some hint of an event December 12th or 13th and the second half of December. So let's get started here. This is an image which shows the current cold temperatures um, as of this Sunday afternoon. And lots to talk about in this image here. But the main thing we want to point out is that the heart of the cold air, as you can see, is really over here. It's cold here, but it's not really brutal stuff. And this purple stuff here, this is the really cold stuff right in here. So that's where most of the cold air is as of right now. The question is, how do we get that to come over the North Pole and into the into the North into North America? Now, this is the jet stream map by 120 hours, and what happens here is we can see our ridge developing. A lot of forecasters have been talking about this. If you're following it on Twitter or social media, and that's all very true. A monster ridge that comes up here, and of course, this is our positive PNA. And of course, since it extends past Alaska into Alaska, it becomes a, um, excuse me, a negative EPL. That's it. Now, this bubble up in here of, of high pressure relative to normal is, of course, the negative Arctic Oscillation. But we really don't have a Greenland block here. It's kind of neutral, the Greenland block. So we've got one polar vortex forming here because this splits everything in half. You see that how that drives everything up this way? And another vortex forming over here. But this is the really colder air. So we have to get this piece of Arctic oscillation to get move away a little bit so we get a much better cross-polar flow. So the key feature, again, right now is the problem in getting the cold air here is uh, this feature right here. That has to move somewhere to this direction a little bit or maybe towards Greenland. And then you can be able to tap this cold air inland. I'll bring it right straight on down. Okay, um, next slide. Now, this is the pattern at day 10. And again, we can clearly see we have two polar vortexes. One is here, and the other one is here. But we're not getting a big cross polar flow because the flow is going like this. We're not getting a direct flow in towards north, northern Canada and North America. It's there, but it's, 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 it's very circuitous. And this is some cold stuff. And this sort of flow eventually is going to grab some of this cold air, but it's going to take a while for that to happen. We can see that at 240 hours. Now, notice here at 240 hours, we're beginning to see some of this more serious cold air show up here. And here's the, the heart of the Arctic air over Siberia. At beginning to come over the pole a little bit. Not a lot, but a steady increase, definitely uh, getting colder here. This is by December 15th, uh, 13th, I should say. And now the overall pattern by 360 hours this is December 18th, a week from Christmas. And a couple of things to talk about. First, as you can see over Greenland, with the NAO here is not negative. I don't care what any CPC chart shows you. The NAO here is neutral, which I use the equal sign for that. It's neutral. That, that's just what this is. Um, now, the polar vortex is right here. We can see that. Here's our Arctic Oscillation. And again, it's gone negative. There's a block right up in there. There's the other polar vortexes here. So we still have our ridge and our PNA and negative EPO. And that's all well and good. And we have our Arctic negative Arctic Oscillation, like we just talked about right here. That's fine. And uh, but the uh, and the polar vortex in north in central Canada, but not at a negative NAO, and that's a little bit hurting for snowstorm chances there a little bit. All right, and by 360 hours, look at the cold air. We remember we saw dramatic increases here. Now look how much colder it is here, and then here we're seeing more more a bit more of a connection, and the cold air is beginning to really build here in Canada. So like I said, there are changes coming. It's just going to take a while. For example, this is the European Ensemble. The temperatures from Richmond um, for the next uh, 15 days, and you can see here that um, these temperatures get colder. Uh, starting this weekend, we start, you know we start seeing our temperatures 
uh, which is not pretty, a little on the cold side, 32, 42, that's fine. And then I would constantly in the 20s and then around 40 degrees uh, from the weeks you know, of mid-December here. So again, not the coldest December of all time. Let's, let's be clear about that, but definitely uh, a cold pattern uh, developing here. Uh, now let's talk about the rain event for December 7th. So, excuse me, for December 6th on Wednesday. Now this is the rain event. Let me get my markers. You can see we're talking about Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, okay? Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. This all green stuff is rain. Okay, rain. This blue stuff here is snow in the Shenandoah Valley and the mountains of West Virginia. You can see that Greenbrier Valley, Western Maryland. And of course, as the cold air comes in, the rain will change the snow. Now, earlier, this looked a lot more impressive. But as you can see, as we get into Wednesday morning, the temperatures have not dropped off enough. So all the molar precipitation essentially rain. Now, what's happening here is the cold front is coming through faster. And because the front's coming through faster, the cold air doesn't have a chance to build up right behind the front. So when the front hits, the cold air takes its time reaching the coast, and you don't get a flash change over the snow. So that's what the difference is. All right, let's take a look at Friday now. This is the European model here for Friday. And the European model this afternoon has this wave of low pressure well off the coast. It just brings a little bit of light snow in portions of the Shenandoah Valley and inch into southwest Virginia, West Virginia. Um, you can see what it looks like here. This is the overall pattern. Now, this is the upper air feature, which is going to cause the low pressure to develop. You can see this little blue yellow area right there. See that? Now, this will cause low pressure to form, but it depends on how close to the coast it's going to form. So that's what's causing all the uncertainty with regard to December uh, 8th and 9th. Now, this is the European model valid for December 8th. And this is the snow line here, the technical snow line at 850. And this is the 32 degree line. So this is saying temperatures, let's say Richmond around 33 degrees, Raleigh around 34 degrees, Charlottesville 31 degrees, Roanoke 31 degrees. But all the priests have looked where it is. It's down here. So this might be wet snow or rain mixed over all in this whole area. So it's much flatter on the operational European than it has been. This is the European Ensemble, also valid Friday morning. Same thing. All the precipitations in Southeast Virginia, North Carolina, and the temperatures are not that cold. This is the European Ensemble for Friday night, getting the precip comes a little further north, the temperature is a little colder. You can see the precip's now getting up into here, close to Richmond. But this is the and there's the 32 degree line, and this is your snow line right here. So this might be snow or rain snow mixed on Friday night, uh, December 8th into the Saturday, December 9th. It might be, according to the European. But Let's look at these temperatures. Now, this is Saturday morning. You can see these temperatures here, Saturday morning around Richmond, 33, 34 degrees, DC, 31, 32 degrees, uh, Raleigh, 31, 32 degrees. And of course, in the Piedmont and Shendo Valley, it's much colder. This is the temperatures for Friday. This slide should have come first. Sorry about that. But you can see Friday morning, Richmond is 35 degrees, which is a mixed precipitation. That's, you know, that's, that's at best. Any snow that falls is going to be west of Richmond, 995. So it's going to be snow in this area. Any fall that any precipitation that does fall, that applies in Shenandoah Mountains, Western North Carolina, Western Virginia, uh, Western Maryland, much of Pennsylvania. Now the European Ensemble does show more promise because it's got the uh, you can see this clear cluster of low pressure areas, uh, all of this right here, fairly close to the coast. So maybe it there might be a little more precip here than what the European operational one is is showing. Indeed, if we look at the uh, ensembles here for snow for Richmond, we can see that the ensemble mean on 132 hours, which takes us into uh, the morning of December 9th, uh, next Saturday, has about 1.2 1, 1 inches in Richmond. So, you know, if the temperatures are cold enough, I, that'll be most on the grassy surfaces. Now, this is Roanoke, same sort of thing. We're going to look at the green here. This is the ensemble run. See, the, the blue line is the operational. And you can see it's got very little snow, but the green line actually has an inch, inch and a half in some areas. So that's, again, a little promising. And this is Washington, D.C. And the ensemble meet also has an inch of snow in some areas, with a few members actually showing a bit more snow than that. Now, this is the GFS that came out Sunday afternoon. Also quite weak with the whole system. It's got a little bit of snow, believe it or not, in the area between Norfolk and Richmond. Of all places to get snow, Williamsburg, 
a West Point place like that in Central Maryland, a little bit here in the Connecticut, very insignificant, not a big deal. And the reason for that is because the low level temperatures are too warm. This is the Sunday GFS. Again, Sunday afternoon. Look at those temperatures in in um in Richmond, for example. 38 degrees, 37 degrees. That's that's rain. Uh, DC 38 degrees. That's 40 degrees on the coast of New Jersey, 36 in, in Philly. That's that's rain. So that's the problem with the GFS. So I'm not sure where it gets that two inch snowfall, but most of these temperatures are too warm. And we can see this on the accumulated precipitation over the period for Friday night. Uh, you can see most of the day on Friday here. This covers all of Friday, uh, the 24-hour period. And you can see uh, the precipitation. It's fairly significant here, but this is, here is the edge, this dark green stuff here. That's about four-tenths of an inch. And so there's some precipitation in southeast Virginia, east and North Carolina, but it's not a lot. And like we talked about, the temperatures on this are too warm to support snow. This is the 12Z GFS Ensemble, a little more precipitation further back to Richmond where the temperatures are colder and back towards Roanoke and up towards Patuxent River and uh, Salisbury and Dover, uh, Delaware. You can see a little more precip there. And if you look at the ensembles, it also has a low pressure area off the North Carolina coast in a manner very similar to what we saw with the European. In fact, let's go back and take a look at this, the European. See it? Very similar. Okay. Now, what's happened is that since then, here comes the 18Z GFS. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of the 18Z, but it's there. 18Z GFS came out. And it has the low much closer to the coast, and it's got the cold air much stronger inland. So this is now Friday afternoon, if you can believe this. And then uh, this is... Uh, Friday night, 7 p.m., it's snowing in Richmond and in Charlottesville and, and D.C. and Patuxent River and Salisbury and Georgetown and Philly and Trenton, New Jersey, up into New York City, snowing out towards Roanoke and Danville. You can see all that. And then finally, it comes to an end early Saturday morning, mostly still doing it in New York and, and New England. It's not a big snow, but the temperatures are colder. You can see 34 degrees. That's significantly colder. Colder in Philly, colder in New York City, colder in D.C. by 4 or 5 degrees. And as a result, you get accumulating snow. And again, the GFS, for some reason, has its best snow over Richmond and points to the east between Williamsburg and Richmond, and then another cluster down here by Danville and uh, Martinsville, that sort of thing, and then more up in this area. So, you know, one to three, one to four in snow if the 18Z GFS is right. And again, that's mostly going to be on your grassy surfaces, your car tops, that sort of thing. Here is the 18Z GFS ensemble uh, covering all of Friday. Notice here you're getting now this dark blue stuff. We didn't see that before. That's 5 tenths, 75 hundredths of an inch of liquid. And then you see this 2 tenths way out here. So this could be snow in here according to the 18Z GFS ensemble. So that's an interesting step in the right direction. Now, once this blows on through, what happens after the pattern? Well, uh, this is Sunday morning now. We can see the disturbance that caused that feature is right there. And we have this big, nice trough. There's our polar vortex right here. Uh, coming down this direction, you can see it. And of course, that triggers the low pressure to develop here. And there's our ridge very nicely. Now, this is 240 hours. We can see the pattern, the trough remains in place. It's broad, it's deep, very nice looking map. But this gives us more color presentation. And we can see the polar vortex is situated very nicely right here. And we still have our big ridge, but this is a big ridge right here. Now, there is something in the jet stream in the height lines right in this area right here where they bend. That could be a short wave. It could be a low pressure area trying to develop December 12th or 13th. And indeed, the European model is showing something there on the 12th or 13th. Here it is, the European model. You can clearly see the low pressure area, I'll call it the marker, right here. And it comes up this way over southeast Virginia and brings a big snowstorm to much of the northern mid-Atlantic, western Virginia, New, York, New England, New York City, New Jersey, that sort of thing. Richmond is on the edge if he Norfolk is rain east North Carolina's rain 10 days out I it's just something that might be happening I've been looking at the 12th or 13th for two weeks now it seems like so I'm I this is kind of exciting to see and then finally 360 hours we can see a nice big again another disturbance of some type in these height lines you see these height lines bend right here I don't know what that is that might be a low pressure area of some type here's our big ridge there's our polar vortex you know right here then Greenland is Again, neutral at best. So still a cold pattern, still an impressive pattern, not ideal. But a step in the right direction. Again, going to take us 
all, all the way to Christmas. Now this takes us to the 16 to 20 day, which will take us to the Christmas period. And this shows all, this is the rollover patent model, as I call it. It takes a top 10 analogs as of December 3rd, and it continues them past the 11 to 15 day into the 16 to 20 day. And we can see a huge ridge right here. Um, this is the blocking pattern, Arctic oscillation there. And we can see the one polar vortex is here. You can see this and another polar vortex is there deep trough over the eastern u.s so the cold pattern remains in place that's essentially what this means and if we look at the precipitation these are temperatures rather you can see it's cold pretty much east of the mississippi river and there's above normal precipitation signal here on the east coast the mid-atlantic range uh, on the week and the days before christmas for a possible snow event of some type of this sort of pattern anyway that's this week in weather i'm meteorologist det i'll see you on the facebook page and on the website